started. So, for those of you who don't know me, I am Gemma. I am the team leader for Team Thermo Fans, which is the best Thermomix team um, in Australia. I think I'm a little bit biased, but um, we're on the mid north coast, far north coast um, of New South Wales. But we actually can welcome people to our team from all around Australia now. So we've got um, a consultant in Sydney and um, a few other places around the place. So. Um, yeah, welcome. And I see a lot of those places are in our areas, but some aren't. But that's completely fine because obviously we come to you virtually now, so um, we can we can service anybody these days. Um, today, the idea of today is to give you a little look at the TM6. Um, if you've already got a Thermomix, you might have invited some friends along, um, and hopefully we'll be able to get you a discounted host reward um, as well. And I'll explain about that. Uh, later in the demo. The um, menu today, um, we are doing, we're sort of doing a bit of a, um, a mixed mixed bag today. We are doing the zesty avocado dip, which is my favorite all time dip. I've got a friend coming over this afternoon. It's my favorite dip in the Thermomix. It's really fresh and delicious. Um, then we're doing the chicken velouté meal. So it's a really good, um, a really good one to show you how you can cook in layers in your Thermomix and you know you can um, mix it up and I'll give you a few tips and stuff about that as well cooking different things at the same time in your Thermomix and then in the festive in the um, in the idea of keeping it festive I decided I'd show you some vanilla custard because we probably all have to make custard um, for Christmas, if we're having Christmas pudding, you can't have Christmas pudding without custard. And if you try custard in your Thermomix, you will never go back to buying packet or container custard. So before we get started, um, I will tell you how to get a Thermomix. Thank you, Shane. Um, so we do have lots of payment options. Um, the Thermomix is $2,359. I will, when the chicken velouté is cooking, I will go through all the different ways that you can pay for a Thermomix. At the moment, we do have a special um, and running into December where if you do purchase a new Thermomix, you will receive the free barbecue cookbook and also one of our 2.6 litre Thermo servers, which are our probably our second most popular item, um, second only to our Thermomix. So, Without further ado, if anyone's got any questions, make sure you type them in the chat as we go. I have got the lovely Natasha with me. Do I have any other consultants, Shane? Just Tash, yep. So um, Tash will mo monitor the chat a little bit as well. Um, so if you don't want to come off mute, just type it into the chat and Tash can either answer it there or yell it out and um, hopefully I'll be able to answer. But we're going to um, do the zesty dip first. Now I've told the Thermomix that this is what I'm making today. So I've actually done a plan. Um, if I go in here and I go in my week, um, I'll talk to you about cookie do where this is um, coming from whilst something's cooking as well. Um, but I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna cook the zingy avocado and lime dip and I'm gonna start say start cooking. And it's as simple as that. Radio, now I'm going, my scales automatically come up of course. Um, to weigh in my cheese. I better grab my ingredients. Right here, a little bit extra is okay with the cheese. It's like a little bit more than double, but that's okay. Um, and we will go next and we will um, do that for 10 seconds. Okay, now we're going to chuck in our two jalapeno chilies. Now I, with this recipe, I actually take the seeds out of my jalapenos um, like that. It doesn't matter if you leave a couple of seeds in, um, but I don't want it to be too hot. So um, you can take the seeds out, makes it a little bit more desirable. Um, and we've got some fresh coriander. I know there's lots of people out there that hate coriander, but this, this it actually goes really well in this. And um, two spring onions just chopped into pieces, a garlic clove, I'll chuck in two, and then we give that a chop up. 
for two seconds. Could it be any easier? <laughs> Radio. So there you go. As you can see, thanks, Shane. Um, as you can see, that's all um, been chopped up nicely. That um, parmesan's all grated. Um, our garlic's been minced in there. Now we're adding our cos lettuce, which is so random, I know, but you chuck in your cos lettuce leaves and you chuck in the zest of your lime. So when you're zesting in the Thermomix, you're actually just taking off that um, really thin outer green peel um, and the Thermomix does the rest. So you don't have to um, be microplaning that or anything like that. Um, and the juice of your lime as well. Has anyone had this dip? Tell me, oh, oh Natasha's already said that she loves this recipe. Um, and hummus is another one. Yeah, hummus is probably our, um, this one I don't always have all these ingredients for on hand, um, but hummus, we pretty much always have everything we need. So it is our probably go-to um, as well for a dip too, Tash. And you can pretty much have everything always ready for hummus. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with my avocado. Make sure you get all that out because you don't wanna waste any of that. Although avocados are a good price at the moment. They're not as um, expensive as they usually are. So that's nice for Christmas. I'll just keep that seed because I've got a little tip with this um, dip as well. If you keep the avocado seed, I'll show you what I do with it. Okay. In it goes, radio. Avocado is in. And some mayonnaise. Now you can definitely make your mayonnaise in your Thermomix. Obviously, you can see I have not, um, but it is quite nice. And um, I know you do the cooked mayonnaise, don't you, Tash? I do. I was just about to type that. Oh, <laughs> I beat you to it because I know you you um, suggested that you could do that for the um, the cooking yeah. class yesterday. Um, and you know, your homemade mayonnaise is always nicer than your store bought, but. <laughs> Okay, and that's it. How easy is that? <laughs> when, I make, when I make the mayonnaise too, yeah. I, I use the yogurt jars to store it in. Ah, oh, yep. So that I'm only opening one small portion at a time and the others I put oh. the coldest part of my fridge. Yep. So I get a little bit more light. Yes, okay. Yep. I um I put garlic in with mine um, because I've got a little girl who is obsessed with aioli. She actually calls it mayoli. Um, and I make a batch and it's gone within less than a week. So I don't have to worry about storing it. It's just that I can't keep it up to her. Uh, anyway. And we call it um, kaioli. Kaioli. Because we've got an olive. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> How funny. Radio, so now how easy is that for a dip? Like, I just, I can never get over how easy it is to make a dip in the Thermomix. And I am a dip girl. I do love a dip. Um, and you can make quite a lot. Like, that's a big bowl of, of that dip. How impressive is that for Christmas? You can serve it with crackers um, or, you know, your fruit sticks, whatever you want. Now, if you're going to keep that and serve it like later tonight, which I'm going to, if you just put the avocado seed back in like that and glad wrap it and put it in the fridge, it won't go discolored at all. For some reason, it thinks that it's still in its, um, in its skin or I don't know what it thinks, but that's my top tip for anything avocado. If you make a guacamole, anything with avocado, put your avocado seed back in until just before you're ready to serve it as well. And I'm just washing my spatula. 
I'm very lucky that I have got a second bowl here and we will have that um, available as a host reward in the new year, we have been told. So if you haven't got two bowls for your Thermomix, uh, make sure you stay in touch with us and um, keep listening because we have been told that it will come as a host reward in the new year. So just lovely, nice, new, clean bowl you get to chuck on your Thermomix. Um, now, I am now going to make our chicken velouté meal or get it started at least. Um, I'm going to go back into my week. There we go. And it's my next thing on my list. And I'm going to hit start cooking. And I better get my ingredients. I'm being too quick for myself today. Um, radio. So our garlic. Where's our garlic? Here it is. One garlic clove, and I only did one. I don't know. I must be um, slipping. But you can, you can do one garlic clove in the thermomix. Let's have a look at what it looks like. Um, there was a question in the registration about making smaller amounts in your thermomix. So there you go. Even just one garlic clove gets nicely grated um, in your thermomix as well. Um, and if you are looking to... Um, do smaller amounts in your Thermomix. You can easily halve most recipes um, and you, you don't really have to um, change the cooking time if you're halving recipes. If you're doubling recipes, then you want to increase the cooking time by about 20%, but do a little bit of trial and error with that um, because you don't want to um, obviously undercook anything. But with halving recipes, just do keep to the same cooking time and it'll be perfect every time. Um, now, I just want to make sure, did I skip past the onions here, Shane? Because it's telling me I need to go back. Let me have a look. So if you, if you think you've missed a step or you think, oh, should the onions be in here yet? You can just go back. Nope, I didn't. Okay, so it's going to do the garlic by itself. Excellent. Olive oil. And it's going to cook just the garlic. So it's going to heat up. So it does do um, high heat with these onions. And this is the new recipe for the TM6 with the high heat function. So a few of the recipes have changed and they do catch us a little bit sometimes because um, a few of the methods have changed with our high heat. But we'll see how we go. <laughs> Um, I did actually use my potato peeler um, attachment, um, which is a, something that we can pre-order at the moment, um, which actually goes in on top of my blades um, and it peels um, and it also acts as a blade cover for your um, Thermomix as well. Now, the potatoes are peeled, but as you can see, if you they're sort of roughed up. You can't really see, but it basically roughs up the and roughs the skin off and really it sort of cleans them, um, the skins off. So they're quite, um, they're quite dinted or sort of like, they sort of look like they've got cellulite almost, the potatoes. Um, but they make delicious roast potatoes with a bit of oil on top of them. They really crisp up because of that rough skin. Um, but today they're only going in a potato and leek soup. So it doesn't really matter what they look like. I guess, for potato and leek soup. Um, the other thing I was thinking about with that is it's going to retain more of the vitamins that are under that layer of skin. Yes, that's what everybody's everybody's been telling me that, Tash, that, yeah. that most of the nutrients are either in the in the bottom layer of the skin or just, just under yeah. the skin. Um, so there you go. They're going to be healthier. Excellent. Um, Oh, Tash, Chris is having trouble getting off, getting on. Um, have we got anyone in the waiting room, Shane? Possibly? No? Okay. You might help her, Tash. Thanks. Excellent. Rightio. So we're just heating up that oil um, ready for our onions. Any questions? Anybody want to tell me anything? Evelyn, it does, um, it does the TM5. So depending on what um, Thermomix you've got, 
You're not going to have a peeler mode on your TM5, but you can use the peeler for a blade cover and you can just put it on speed four and do the peeling in it. And it's only available for pre-order at the moment. So, um, yeah. A four, a 31 maybe. Or you meant to say five. <laughs> Either one, because we don't have a four. <laughs> Unless I don't know about it. I'm pretty sure we didn't have a four. Maybe Evelyn will come back with, with a, either a 31 or a 5. It's old and I can't actually just say what it is on the thermomix, but it's like 15, 16 years old. Oh. Um, it's really old. It's really old. Oh. Can really you old. send us a photo of it, Evelyn? I would love it. I would love a photo of it. Uh, it might be a 21. Oh. Okay. Our oil's heated up. And in that case, Evelyn, I'd probably say no with your potato peeler. Sorry. Um, your oil is heated up and now you chuck in your onions. Um, so basically what we're doing here um, is we're making the base of our potato and leek soup. Um, splash guard, thanks Shane. Um, and in here now I'm doing high heat on the onions. Now in a second I'll let you hear those sizzling away. And thank you Shane, my um, super... OHS officer, um, we will put the splash guard on. <laughs> what was that? So it's a Vermeer. Vermeer. work, yep. That's what we all. That's what we all have. Oh, okay. I don't know how to send you the picture. Oh, Evelyn, I'll send you an email and you can reply to an email. Thirty-one. Oh, there you go. That's excellent. That's a thirty-one. <laughs> Excellent, love it. Yeah, so that's the 31. No, sorry. <laughs> um, Evelyn, so you've had it for like 17 years or something, did you say? A while, the, uh, the scales don't work on it. The scales stopped working on five years. Okay, you can get it. We still service the 31, so talk to your consultant and um, you could get the scales fixed if you, if you wanted to. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, or yeah, well, you know, like a TM6 is probably better than getting your 31 fixed, but um, we, we'll service them forever. So, yeah. Excellent. No worries. Excellent. But yeah, so listen to this. This is something you won't have heard in your TM31, Evelyn. Can everyone hear that? The onions are sizzling. Sizzling onions which is what we didn't have in our previous Thermomix models. And it's not how the cover sits. Thank you, Shane. And that's something we missed because we um, sauteed all our onions and garlic from all our European meals and that was something I missed in the Thermomix. Yes, and that, Evelyn, you're not alone. Let me tell you, I reckon every second person that bought a TM31 or a TM5 off me um, said... Oh, I just wish it would brown. I wish it would brown my brown my food. And I I used to say, oh yeah, but you know, it doesn't have to. The the recipes still taste really good and and that's I believe I wholeheartedly believe that because all of the recipes in the Thermomix, when I got my Thermomix were better than anything I'd ever cooked. And you know, I thought they were fabulous. And then we got the TM6 and we actually started to taste the onion, the brown onions and the caramelization and all that and the browning of the meat and all that and it just took it to the next level and everything tastes even better than it did before so yeah it, you're not alone thinking that <laughs> um caramel it's a good question where do the peels go on the peeler well much to shane's disgust down the drain because they're they uh, in the water, but they're so minute, it, it's just like dirty water. You don't have any big chunks of potato. So you could pro probably put it out on the garden, would probably have suited Shane better than me just pouring it down the sink, but it is just like dirty dishwater. It, it doesn't have any chunks in it. So, yeah. I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. I'm undecided about that. Um, Shane thinks it's fine until we have to call the plumber if um, it's, it blocks the drains or something. 
but nobody's had a block drain so far and there's a few of us using them so fingers crossed <laughs> Shay's just laughing. He knows that he's going to be the one that has to um, fix the drain if the drain blocks. But let me tell you, I put much worse things down the drain. <laughs> um, oh, Natasha says she's why she sold a TM5 and the TM6 high heat is amazing, full of stir. Oh, the, the stir fry that we do in our um, TM6 is, um, and Tash got me onto this, is the chicken teriyaki stir fry. And you cook the... You cook the chicken for like six or seven minutes on high heat and then you stir fry the veggies separately and then you just toss them together and you wouldn't do it any other way, I don't think, once you've done it in your Thermomix and you know that you're not going to burn anything and you're not going to get fat splattered everywhere and it's not going to be a mess. Um, it's fabulous. Rightio. So we've done our high heat. Let me just show you the um, those are sizzling. Can you hear them? Sizzling... Um, little onions there and then we're going to pop in our water and now we're going to make our soup so it just that step has basically been added just to make it a little bit more flavorsome than the recipe was before but this recipe um the chicken velouté meal when we um used to go to people's houses and do demos back in the good old days um this chicken velouté meal was so impressive people just loved it Oh, Carmel said mine will go in the compost bin. You're a good girl, Carmel. It'll be very liquidy. <laughs> um, but a table... The great thing too about this meal is not just chicken. It's you can do fish. You can do whatever. Yeah, that's right. And it's beautiful with salmon um, if, you're, if you like salmon. Now, what I just popped in there now is the vegetable stock paste. So... For those of you who've got a Thermomix, hopefully you've all made your vegetable stock paste. I can't bang on enough about how good your vegetable stock paste is and how that is actually what helps make so many of your meals taste so good in the Thermomix as well because you're actually using your own, your own stock. So you've got a really good base. Um, now in there I'm putting in my leek or just the bit of, bit of my leek. Um, and my potatoes that were chopped up in my or peeled in my with my blade cover and then I have got my Varoma so now I've got my water with my onions and my garlic I've now got my potato and my leek in the basket and then I am going to put my Varoma on the top now your Varoma is your steaming attachment and inside here, I've actually already stacked my Varoma with the chicken, but I've got my chicken tenderloins there. And like Tash said, that could be fish, that could be salmon, whatever you wanted um, would steam really well, um, with, even with this meal if you wanted it as well. Um, place your Varoma on, secure it, and get started. Now, it didn't tell me to put my tarragon on, but did I miss that step or did it just... <laughs> Oops, <laughs> I was just watching it all fall down, Shane. It's okay. As I was saying, um, Rigo, can you reissue the email to Chris Cuthbert? She only hosts today. She, can get, she can't get on. She said she can't join us. Gemma is on another meeting. Ah. Oh, I've seen her mildly, and I can see two of me now, so I think Chris is there. Oh, Chris, have you been able to get on? As me. Oh. Is that Chris? Yeah, it is. Oh, good. I couldn't get on. I could only get on on my phone. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, Chris. So, as I was saying, and I just knocked half my kitchen down, um, <laughs> if you missed that, <laughs> um, a little bit of tarragon um, is really nice sprinkled on this chicken. Um, and it is. it used to be part of the recipe, but I might have missed it. And you can put salt and pepper, whatever you wanted. Um, it's completely up to you. Nothing broke, by the way. We're all okay. Um, so now, that is now steaming. So your water with your onion and your garlic and veggie stock paste is in here. Um, and yes, the steamer does come with it. Everything that I'm using today, except the peeler, is um, to be pre-ordered. Um, you're now 
steaming for 16 minutes. So now this is where you could actually leave your Thermomix. You don't have to be beside it. You don't have to be in the kitchen. Um, you can walk away from your Thermomix and it will actually ding when you are needed back um, to do the next step. Now, whilst your Thermomix is doing that, you could then prep the rest of your recipe. And there was a really cool update, um, which I didn't actually get until this morning, um, which is that you can go in and preview the rest of your recipe. So if you come, I only got it just five minutes before we started, so let, I am a little bit, um, I might be a little bit clunky um, with showing you this, but if I go preview, I can actually then, whilst it's still cooking, I can actually skip through and it will tell me what the next steps are so I could get the next things ready um, to have ready to go. So that's quite handy because um, the other way of doing that, um, the other way of doing that is going to your three little dots and um, going recipe detail and then you can go back to the start and that's when you can then um, have a look at the recipe um, if you wanted to. So um, it's sort of just an easier way of doing that, I guess. And then whenever you're out of your recipe, you'll just see the little bookmark here. You just click the bookmark and then you're back in, um, back into your, into where you're up to. So that's a really cool thing. Have you got that update yet, Tash? I do. Yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't know how I missed it, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Carmel, have you updated yours? No, I haven't. Oh, yeah. You haven't been near your Thermomix. Oh, hardly. No. I just, I just well, want to go back to um, quick, 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 you know. Yeah. And yeah. I've been camping pretty much. That's so right. Too. Yeah, yeah, interstate camping. Yeah, excellent. Yes. Excellent. Rightio. Okay, so while that's cooking, like I said, you don't need to be near your Thermomix. You can prep your veggies. You can you can do all that stuff that I've already done. Um, but what I'll do is I will tell you um, about the payment options. Is that what we're going to, Rigo? Payment options. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> um, so payment options for your Thermomix. So there, like I said, there are lots of different um, options to buy your Thermomix. Um, chat with your consultant. I'm happy to stay on at the end um, and talk about what suits you the best um, as well. But joining our team is a really good way of earning your Thermomix. Like I said before, it doesn't matter where in Australia you are now, you can join Team Thermo Fans. Um, it's $125 for the kit that you see on the screen now. Um, and that's all you need is your Thermomix and the kit and you can get ready to start earning money from sharing the Thermomix um, with your friends and family. If that's not for you, then um, you can do a one-off payment, PayPal, credit card direct deposit. I need to add Afterpay. Afterpay has just been added as a payment option as well. Um, but my favorite, or second favorite, other than joining my team, um, is the 36 months interest free. So we've got 36 months interest free available until the 2nd of December. So still a few more days. I don't, I don't even know what day it is today. Um, but I think for another few days, we've still got um, the 36 months interest free. So that's a really affordable way to pay it off. Um, 16.83 a week. Your consultant can definitely help you save that on your groceries um, if that's if you need to fit your Thermomix into a budget um, as well. And as Shane just alluded to before, the Easy Three, which um, gets your Thermomix ordered. You just pay $1,009. Um, that orders your Thermomix for you. You then 30 days later pay $700 and then another 30 days after that you pay your last $700. So that's a good way if you just want to break it into three more manageable chunks, um, then easy three might be for you. But like I said, make sure you just chat to your consultant and we can help you um, decide which um, is better for you. I did the first Thermi with interest free, saved so much money it was paid off in nine months. <laughs> yeah, me too, actually. Um, I, I couldn't believe how quickly I paid my Thermomix off, but um, we were eating a lot of takeaway and, and stuff like that. So that kind of stopped when we um, got our Thermomix. Oh, Evelyn said me three. Excellent. I'm so pleased to hear that because um, 
Sometimes um, you don't actually see the savings of your Thermomix straight away either because your food quality goes up so so much, but I'm so happy to see um, that you guys saved money straight away um, as well. And we can definitely help if budget is a concern, we can give you budget friendly meals and um, we can make it very, very cheap to feed the family as well. Tash said we weren't doing takeaway, but were things like yogurt and almond milk. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, Tash. It's it, every, every family that I talk to, it's something different. Like, if someone told me I could save money making my own bread, I would think that that was a fate worse than death because I actually like, you know, going and, and buying, you know, my four or five dollar loaf of bread. However, when COVID was on, Wes started making bread and we now make our own bread. But if you'd have told me that eight years ago, I would have went, oh, no, I'm definitely not getting a Thermomix if I've got to start making my own bread. Um, but Every family is different. So you just have to talk to your consultant about what you're doing at the moment and where, what we could help fit into your lifestyle because, you know, I don't make yogurt because um, my family don't really eat yogurt. So, you know, it's, the, it's different for every family. And that's probably half the fun of being a Thermomix consultant is actually having those conversations with people to really get into what... How, how will a Thermomix help you? Like, what do you need it to do? Like, you know, and, and how's it going to fit into your um, family? So, yeah, chat to us about that. Um, we'd, love to, we'd love to talk to you about that um, as well. Right, we've got eight minutes to go. Rigo, what are we going to, what else are we going to talk about? <laughs> what was that? Host rewards. Oh, okay. And I did hear that Chris, did you say Chris is hosting today? Tash? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. We and do. I can't get on. And she couldn't get on. <laughs> That's okay, oh, Chris. Well, just, get, just keep saying that you're in another meeting with this progress. So I've got it on my screen, but I just can't come into your into your Zoom. Yeah. Okay. That's odd, isn't it? Anyway, you don't have to. You don't even have to have your technology working well these days to be a host. Because look, Chris is doing it. <laughs> um, but as a thank you for hosting, um, everybody who invites two friends along to these um, little sessions that we do on a Sunday, and we are possibly in the new year going to add some midweek ones. It's, we're in, we're, Rigo and I are in discussions at the moment about what day we could um, add those in. Um, but just as a thank you for inviting your two friends along, uh, we give you a discount code to be able to go to... Um, the mix shop and buy one of these items at a discounted price, um, which you really need thermo servers and you really need your oven, oven mat and um, bread mat if you're going to do some bread as well in your thermo mix. Good news is that if one of your friends decides to buy or if you ever refer a friend who's ready to buy to your thermo mix consultant, you will actually get one of these items for free or like the, the VAX a limited time one, but it's an even bigger discount on the mini VAC. Um, so that's our way of saying thank you. Um, to our owners who refer their friends to us because as you know um, our business works completely on word of mouth and you guys um, telling your friends about the Thermomix and um, inadvertently sometimes you're selling them for us because um, you're talking about it at work and you're taking things that you've cooked and all that kind of stuff so we like to say thank you to you guys for that. Um, the next when you um, hop off today and probably tonight, you will get an email um, with the replay and a thank you for coming. Um, I will have the link that you can share um, to invite your friends to other um, virtual cooking experiences. Um, I haven't got all the dates in there yet, but the link will be the same. So come back to that um, in the new year or closer to Christmas um, and have a look at what dates we've added and then you can book into which ones suit you and um, share that link with your friends as well. So. We're going to, we, 2022 is going to be a big year of um, getting lots of our Thermomix owners, lots of the rewards and stuff like that. So stand by for that. Can you talk on what you're cooking now? Oh, I can't hear what she's saying. A like Sorry, Tash, I didn't get any of that. What did you say? You're all Sorry. breaking up on me. Because the, my dog is making me 
Oh, okay, I can hear you now. Go. Yeah, Chris and guests were interested in learning about how to multi-layer cook in one go. Yeah. If, if in this example the, the chicken or the fish was in the deep dish, we could have veggies up the top. Yeah, which is what I'm going to do. The next step of this recipe, so at the moment we've got, and especially for you, Chris, because you probably missed seeing this um, be done, but at the moment yeah. we've got our veggie stock, our onion, our garlic, and our water in the bowl, and then we've got our simmering basket, which is this, um, this little attachment. Um, which yeah. is then holding our potato and our leek. So it's holding it yeah. just above the water. So that's getting steamed inside the bowl. And then in our Varoma, which is our steaming attachment, um, we've got our chicken here cooking away yeah. um, like that. Now, I've only got a couple of pieces down the bottom. I could have more than that if I wanted. Um, oh, I could have more than that if I wanted. Um, but what I've done there is that I've just spread it out as much as I can so that the steam is going around um, and it's all going to be cooked evenly and all of that. Now my next step is I'm going to pop all that down the bottom, make a little hole so the steam can get up and then I'm still going to have all up the top being filled with veggies and whatever else I want to cook. So then at the end I will have a soup that's been cooked whilst my chicken and my veggies has all steamed um, as well. Evelyn said, I make a garlic and cream sauce while Varoma um, quinoa and steamed fish or rice. Yeah, excellent. And it does sound very yummy. <laughs> yeah. um, and there's lots of, if you, um, even if you like, there's lots of recipes where you're doing something whilst you're steaming and you know, you're doing the all in one kind of thing. But you, like um, Evelyn was saying, you can make up your own. Like whilst you're steaming rice, if you had rice in the basket um, here and just water under here and had that on Varoma, then you could put whatever you wanted. So you could put chicken and veggies in here or fish and veggies or whatever you wanted even while you're doing rice. So you wouldn't have to be doing a soup if you didn't want to. You could just be doing rice and steamed fish and veg or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, there are plenty of recipes, but you can... Um, kind of just, you know, once you, I, I always say to people, cook the recipe um, a couple of times so that you kind of know, okay, I'm going to have to have this up here, this down here and all that. And then you can put whatever you want. Like today, um, this recipe is usually carrot and zucchini. There were no zucchinis when I went to Woolies. So I'm just doing green beans and carrot, but I could do whatever veggies I wanted. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Sorry about that, we got a phone call. Who was that, Shane? Is he okay? Excellent. <laughs> Rightio. Um, yeah, so, and what else? Um, I was gonna say, Tash, what other all-in-one meals do you do? Do you have any other go-to? I know that there's the, um, the couscous um, and, I'm trying to think what that one is called. Yeah, Tracy said, the more you use it, the more confident you get with changing up recipes. That's definitely true, Tracy. Um, and the good thing about um, changing recipes and um, modifying it to be, you know, what suits your family and, and all of that is that in a couple of days, we are getting cookie do 3.0, um, which means that if you do do a cookie do recipe even um, and you think, oh, I want to make a few changes, you can actually go into your cookie do make the changes to that recipe and then save it um, so that your, you know, it can just be your recipe on there and you can just go through the steps and you don't have to remember what changes you make as well, which is, yeah, really cool. What were you going to say? Sorry, Tash? Something that I do for because I find that the um, Meatballs, the one that's called uh, meatballs with tomato sauce. Yes. Not in tomato sauce. Yep. Soup. Yep. Um, so often I will whack the corona on and put a piece of veggies all cooked at the same time. Yep. Or I'll make, you know, spiral noodles for me to have 
Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. Cool. And that one, the recipe that Tash is talking about, that's a really good, um, a really good recipe for cook once, eat twice, because it makes so much of that tomato sauce. Um, you basically have like a whole thermo mix full of this really yummy tomato sauce that you can chuck as many veggies into, whatever you want. And then you're steaming your meatballs in the top. But then the next night you could just cook some pasta and have that sauce as pasta sauce and just have a, have a really easy dinner um, as well. I love that recipe. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go next and I'm going to carefully remove the Varoma tray with the chicken. And I'm going to pop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that down the bottom, like I said, and I'm going to give all that a bit of a move around as well. Let me grab my tongs. Oh, the, the tarragon smells delicious. But if you don't like tarragon, obviously don't put that on. Um, but I love it on this. Um, give it a little bit of a move around. And just a little tip that if you, when you're using your Varoma, just make sure you always have a gap so that steam can come up and do your next um, layer as well. And there we go, there's my carrot and my beans. But like I said, you could put whatever veggie you wanted on there um, as well. And it tells me zucchini, um, tells me zucchini and carrot zoodles or taglatel, tagla, no, what is it called? Taglatini. It means thin strips. <laughs> Anyway, so there we go. We've put that on for another five minutes. Um, and w because your um, soup is already boiling there, your um, veggies are going to steam really quickly. I really like broccoli, um, green beans, snow peas, anything like that. Five minutes is plenty um, when once your Varoma is on Varoma temperature. Um, no, Yvette, I actually did the carrot in a machine from Kmart. Unfortunately, the Thermomix doesn't do that, um, but it does, it has done that. But yes, I did buy it at Kmart, which goes against pretty much everything I believe in, but I did, I do have the Kmart um, <laughs> Zoodle Maker. <laughs> um, very good. Now, you still an oh, wouldn't that be good? Yes, I would love to get rid of my Kmart um, <laughs> Zoodle Maker, but yes. Um, no, Leanne, I definitely do not wash the chicken off before putting my veggies in it um, because it's all. It, we don't need to worry about cross-contamination or anything like that because it's all going to be cooked um, anyway and that won't, um, it won't actually come off onto the veggie or anything like that. So it's all good. And the other good thing is that your chicken is actually dripping um, into your soup as well. So you've also, as well as that veggie stock, you're actually getting a bit of chicken stock in there as well from your... Um, chicken cooking as well and pretty much there is some steps where you have to clean and dry your mixing bowl um, between steps but nine times out of ten I don't do those either um, I'm a bit of a rebel when it says clean and dry your mixing bowl um, unless you're changing flavors completely you don't need to oh um, Carissa said Thai peanut chicken with coconut rice I haven't tried that. Um, Carissa, is it a, a cookie dough recipe? I'll have to give it a go. Excellent. Um, now, just while that's cooking, I might just um, explain cookie dough a little bit because we've said cookie dough. Um, yes, that's the other one, Tash. Um, we have mentioned cookie dough a couple of times and those that are new to Thermomix might be thinking, what the hell is she talking about with cookie dough? Um, and it is on cookie dough. Okay, I'll have to write it down. Rigo, can you write that recipe down, please? I'll have to add it to my to try. Um, okay, so if you don't know what we're talking about when we talk about cookie dough, um, cookie dough is our recipe platform for all of our recipes that are made um, for the TM6. Um, and it is, you when you get your new TM6, you actually get six months free cookie dough subscription. Um, cookie Do 3.0 will be $69 a year um, for your subscription. So still a lot cheaper than Netflix or anything like that. Um, but it will, it is like, it's just like Netflix for recipes basically. So um, you can search in there for the recipe name. You can type in a couple of ingredients that you've got in the fridge um, and it will tell you the recipes that um, have that in there. Or you can, um, like you've got on your screen now, you can 
um, search via collection. Um, and then we've also got our little recipe category. So if you've got, you know, a specialized way of eating, you might have gluten free or dairy free or something like that. Um, and that's where um, you can find all those recipes that are in those groups um, as well. Um, a BBL is a bowl, blade and lid, Leanne. Thank you, spare bowl, yeah. <laughs> Um, so it, this, this screen shows what cookie do looks like when you've done a meal plan. Um, so you can see there that you've got each day of the week, you can um, say what you're cooking each day of the week and then you can make it help you make a shopping list um, and work out what you have in your pantry so you're not doubling up on buying things that you don't need. Um, and then we also then um, have the ability to connect that to Woolworths Online. Um, and also we have an app for your cookie do as well. So you can actually take your app to Woolworths with you if you haven't done a meal plan um, and have all your recipes with you on the app um, as well. But the shopping list and the meal planning is probably my favorite thing about cookie do. Um, as I was saying, Cookie Do 3.0, which is coming in like three days. No, it's less than three days. It's Tuesday, I think. Anyway, um, everybody will be updated to that um, for a trial period. Um, anyone that gets a new Thermomix will be on that um, as from the start. And um, with Cookie Do 3.0, like I was saying, you can upload your own recipes and make tweaks to Thermomix recipes um, as well. So. It's very exciting and that's coming coming soon. Um, okay, so now we're done. That's our, that's our chicken cooked. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop that in a thermo server. Here's one I nearly destroyed earlier. Um, and if you don't have an oval thermo server, this is one of the host rewards um, as well. And like I said, you could do more veggie than that if you wanted. I'm going to pop my chicken in there. Oh, yum. Right I'm going to take that over there. Um, and I'm going to pop the lid on that. So that'll keep your food hot or cold for two hours. Um, and you need a thermo server in your life if you don't have one. So talk to your consultant about that. Now, here's my um, leek and my potato. As you can see, there they're all there, nicely steamed, and there's my liquid um, soup start in there as well. Doesn't matter if you spill water on your thermomix screen; just give it a wipe, like I just did. <laughs> um, okay, so we leave the liquid in the bowl. We make sure we pop our potato and our leek into that soup. Get rid of our simmering basket, and we pop our lid on and our MC on, and we're now going in the blend mode. So this is one of our new modes where it will slowly increase the speed for us so we don't have to do that manually um, anymore as well. So that's a minute of blending. So that soup will be super smooth and delicious. And we're going to take out most of that soup into our another thermo server. This is the white thermo server, also a host reward. So you can collect the whole set. You do need the whole set. Um, look at that soup. Can you see how smooth and delicious that is? Anyway, I'm taking almost all of that out. I'm going to leave about yay much, just over the blades. 
Gonna put my lid on that. If my children come home from riding their bikes, that's what they're gonna have as their little afternoon snack today. Um, and now I'm going to, I've just left a little bit of um, the soup in there and I'm gonna continue on with my recipe. Now my recipe now is gonna make the sauce for my chicken and vegetables, all with the same um, ingredients. So you've got a little bit of your soup, we're gonna put in some sour cream. Um, it actually asks for creme fraiche in the recipe, but I just use sour cream for this one. And some Dijon mustard. Two teaspoons. We quite like this quite mustardy, so I go heavy handedly with the, the two teaspoons. Who's getting here now, Shane? They're late. Who? Oh, Alicia's here. That's okay. She knows she knows her way around the Thermomix, so she won't have missed much. Hello, Alicia. <laughs> um, okay, so now that's just gonna stir for a couple of seconds. Um, and then we're gonna pop that on our chicken and our veg. There you go, oh, thanks Shane. See that sauce is now thicker. It tastes completely different to the, just because I've added those two things, the taste is completely different to the soup. And I'm just gonna pour that on my chicken and my veg. You could pour that on when you put it on the plate. I actually like just pouring it all over. And then sometimes I make a little bit too much. Um, like today, that's a little bit too much for my chicken and veg. So I just put this in with my soup and it just gives my soup a little bit more flavor um, as well. So there you go, you don't waste anything that way as well. So let's sit that aside. Does everyone understand what we got? I might just show that all together. Shane, if you go chicken and veg and soup. How good's that? I'll have to take a photo of that today. Then if you didn't have another plain bowl, yes. you could pop cream plain You could. Do that now, so Shane thinks I should do that now to save him washing it up, <laughs> Tash. But that's half the fun is making him wash three dirty bowls. Um, no, but to wash up your Thermomix, um, and that's a really good point, Tash, because I'm hopeless at this and I always forget we have pre-clean mode. Um, to wash up this, you just put a little bit of water in there. And with this one, I don't think I'd even go pre-clean mode with that. I would just turbo this a couple of times. Um, but we do have, if you go over here, Shane, and um, show the modes, we have got this pre-clean mode, which actually helps you decide how dirty something is. If there's like caramelization on the bowl or you've just done um, honeycomb or something like that. It'll actually heat your bowl up um, and all of that. But today, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go turbo. Oh, that's not turbo. That's dough. Hang on a sec. Oh dear. Where's turbo? There. Turbo. <laughs> um, for two seconds, a couple of times. And that will be my bowl clean as a whistle, I would say. Let me have a look. Oh, Alicia, that's okay. <laughs> you are late, but that's all right. It's better late than never. <laughs> and did some of your friends hop on, Alicia? I think. Okay, look, see, there's my nice clean bowl there. I've just obviously still dishwasher it and, and all of that, but you're ready for your next thing. If your next thing was a savoury thing, um, you could pretty much just rinse that and go to your next thing. However... Where's my clean bowl? There she is. Um, I know I'm just showing off with three clean bowls, but you know, I've got to, I've got to be good at something. So collecting bowls is my thing. Um, radio. And now I'm going to go back into my week. So this is what, what I was saying with cookie do. I've told cookie do um, what we're having today. So it's only one step and you can see what we're having um, as well. Tash has got three of them as well. I'm so pleased I'm not the only one. Um, now I'm doing custard. Now, if you haven't seen, if you've been around Thermomix for a while, um, you will have, you will know that Thermomix makes the best custard hands down you can get, right? But if you have are new and you might not know, this might be your first Christmas. Custard in the Thermomix is better than anything you've ever had before. Now, my tip. I made custard in the Thermomix. It was beautiful. 
Who was that? Chris. Oh, Chris, excellent. We used yeah. to actually, um, back in the olden days, we used to do like five or six dishes at a demo and we used to finish with custard and I reckon that pretty much talked anyone that was on the fence in, on buying a Thermomix. This hot custard as you were leaving was yeah. like amazing. Like, and I remember getting home from my first um, Thermomix demo and all I could talk about was custard and my husband at the time was like, but we don't even eat custard. Like, why would we want a machine that makes custard? Like, but all I could tell him about was his custard. It was amazing. That's exactly what happened with us. The first thing I had to make was custard. Yeah, love it, love it. Oh, Leash said she's been on. She just keeps getting one of my friends watching later. Oh, yeah, okay, no worries. All good. <laughs> um, so my tip is just the normal custard recipe, but I don't, I don't do lemon custard. I do vanilla custard. So I skip past the lemon. And then I just start um, this recipe from there. But lemon custard is nice too, but you want vanilla custard for Christmas. Um, what is really nice, if you are that way inclined, is a big dash of brandy in this custard if you're going for Christmas um, flavours as well. Oh, look at Tash. She, of course you've got the healthy version. <laughs> Here I am about to upload all this sugar into my Thermomix and Tash tells me that you can make one with raw almonds. <laughs> That's so us, Tash. <laughs> We're like um, good chef, bad chef. <laughs> healthy chef, not so healthy. Okay, so we've got sugar in there. Um, now, it's going to mill our sugar. I should have used raw sugar and showed you the milling, but that's just white sugar. But what we're going to do is we're going to make that into icing sugar. Evelyn, they are, yes. Um, I'm just trying to think how now. So we used to have, um, yeah, we used to have a runny, a thick, and a thick, a runny, and a thick custard. Um, yeah, but now you just have to, um, go on I think how much you pop in it um, there are lots of different recipes um, do you want a thick custard or a thin custard Evelyn if you were had to choose I'll show you what this does with 30 grams of corn flour so obviously the corn flour content um, is going to be your what makes it thicker or thinner oh that's the wrong spoon Oh, she used thin and thick. So this is 30 grams of corn flour, which I think is going to make a fairly thin custard. But I could be wrong. Let's have a look. We do like it thick-ish. But it does thicken up pretty nicely in the Thermomix. Two eggs. And our milk. And it's literally that easy. Just chuck it in. A little bit extra is okay. See? And, of course, we want a nice big dollop. Dollop. <laughs> dollop. A nice big dollop of our vanilla because we're obviously making this as vanilla custard, not lemon custard. Um, I do do a really nice um, caramel custard as well. Um, and that recipe is actually on the recipe community. I'll have to put that in my um, Cookie Do 3.0. So with the Cookie Do 3.0, um, no, Leanne, normally when you go next, it's at zero, but if you go next and then take the lid off, say, you'll go into a minus. So then you do have to press tear, but it, it does zero it off for you as you go. Um, as I was saying with Cookie Do 3.0, if there's a recipe that you like on the recipe community, um, no worries. Um, if there's a recipe you like on the recipe community, you can actually upload that over and have step-by-step -step instructions on your TM6 as well. So that's exciting with my, um, Oops. That's exciting with my caramel custard because the only reason I don't do that as often is because it's not on my machine and I have to go and find the recipe. 
Um, but very soon that will be on my Thermomix um, as well. And it is delicious. Has anyone had the caramel custard? Tash, it's probably... Who's, you have? No, okay. It's delicious. And my kids love it in little, you know, the little Tupperware containers. I fill those up and put the lid on and then pop them in the fridge and they eat it like it's like yogo. We had yogo when I was a kid. It's very similar to yogo, caramel yogo. It's yummy. And we're getting called again. <laughs> is this our friend? <laughs> oh, this is what happens when we let the children go out and play <laughs> during a virtual cooking experience. <laughs> Excellent. Right, so we've got five minutes to go on our, um, on our custard. It's going nicely and going to thicken off nicely. Now, have we got any questions? Anybody got any questions about... Thermomix or today or anything that we talked about. Speak now. Come off mute. Say hi. I can see some people moving. I reckon you're going to find the mute button. Hi. There we go. Hi. Hi. I'm just wondering if you grapes, like if you had to just grape caro or grapes or bean or grape it, you know, can you do that with Thermomix? Yep. So... Um, did you see, I did grate the parmesan cheese at the start of the dip um, and that is pretty much how you can grate most cheeses, so oh, well, all hard cheeses. Um, it kind of grates them into like tiny little balls, but when you're like needing like zucchini for like a zucchini slice or carrot to put into some, like a bolognese or something like that, the Thermomix is your go-to for that, definitely. Yeah, the, you, you can't get um, you can't get like slices, like uniformed slices, or um, like the like I was saying with the um, the strips of the vegetables. Like I still had to do those in my Kmart spiralizer, um, but definitely anything that just um, you want grated up into small pieces of Thermomix is your go-to for that. Definitely. Tracy said, "Will the 3.0 be released worldwide at the same time?" Yes. It will be on the 29th, Tracy. Oh, she's in Canada. Yes, it will be, Tracy, because that's why that's our issue um, <laughs> at the moment is that it is a worldwide thing and we're trying to adapt it into Australian rules and stuff like that. But yes, I'm pretty sure the 29th is going to be good for you too, Tracy. I forgot that you're in Canada. How exciting! I, I feel really excited that somebody from Canada is watching. Shane? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? You've got three minutes. And I just heard my, did you hear the change then in my, in that noise? Um, so it was sort of like a runny sound and now it's sort of like a gluggy kind of sound and you can tell when it's thickening. It's thickening. Oh, sorry, Shane, I can't really show because it's spurting. Um, but it thickens up and you can actually hear the, you can hear the noise change as well. I'm going to pop it in my. I'm going to pop it in my little. Um, look at me with all the little toys. I'm 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 like a little kid. Um, but this is our thermo jug. So this is the small version. So this is what you could put it in um, on Christmas Day to have nice warm custard to pour over your pudding, um, or your gravy, or anything like that. And this is the same as your thermo servers, but obviously in a little jug. Um, so my children might want this instead, I reckon, <laughs> when they get home, rather than the potato and leek soup. But I'll try and make them have both. Okay, any other questions, girls? Speak now. Anything to add from you, Natasha? I didn't hear that. Did anyone else hear that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I thought it was just me because I do have this going and a bit of background noise, but go again, Tash.
Yeah, the noise of the machine's cutting you out, Tash. Sorry. I think what you're saying, just give me a thumbs up if this is paraphrased correctly, but when you're making custard, you can make any type of milk or milk replacement. Is that what you were saying? Oh, excellent. Okay, so yes, you can make like coconut custard with using coconut milk or if, if you use oat milk, you can make oat custard and it's pretty much exactly the same recipe um, with um, you know your eggs and your corn flour. You can also substitute any sweetener that you like. So if you don't want to put 100 grams of sugar into um, half a litre of custard like I do, um, then you can pop some honey in there or whatever sweetener you use. So the sugar, is, it, it's not dependent on the sugar and it's not dependent on the full cream um, normal milk either. Is that right, Tash? Oh, look, I feel like I need a gold star for that because that, I didn't hear much of that. <laughs> Excellent, so now our custard is ready. Um, we usually just get to chuck it in, turn it on, thicken mode, and it's automated, yes. And you can slow cook, yes, a vet. So I'll, I'll show you the, the modes in one second. So um, this is my custard, look at this. Beautiful. How good's that? It's so delicious. Um, and like I said, that sold me on the Thermomix, even though I'd never had eaten custard before my Thermomix demo. Um, that's what I loved about the Thermomix. But I'll quickly show you the modes of it um, because I would love to show you the slow cook um, mode as well. Um, so you just go finish on that. And then if you slide over, these are all the modes that our TM6 has. So obviously your scales, you've seen them in action today. The dough mode, we didn't make anything with dough, but you can imagine all your breads, pizza dough, scones, all that kind of stuff. Your turbo is what, um, what I did to wash my bowl, but um, it usually is a pulse um, of full power for your Thermomix. Um, Pre-clean, I explained. Um, blend, we used. Sorry, I keep making that go in and out of focus. Blend, like I said, it starts at zero, starts at one or two and works its way up all the way um, to um, speed 10. The egg boil mode, you can um, boil your eggs exactly how you like them. I'm really, I really get impressed with the egg boil mode. So soft all the way around to hard, a whole thermo mix full of eggs if you like um, as well. And We've got the kettle mode, so you can just boil your water up to the temperature that you want. Warm up is to um, reheat your food. Thicken is like what um, Tash was saying with just chuck everything in, put it on thicken mode, and that does your bechamel sauce, your um, custards, all that um, thick sauces. Your rice cooker is like a like a rice cooker. It's uses of the absorption method. Um, your rice is actually in on the blades, but the blades don't move. And then your fermentation, which Tasha just said that's one of her favourites, um, use it all the time. So that's for your yogurt um, and all that kind of stuff. And then that comes to your slow cook. So your slow cook is there. Your slow cook is in a lot of recipes, um, but you can actually pop your Thermomix on slow cook mode as well if you, um, if you want to make your own recipe. But Obviously, there are lots of slow cook recipes for the Thermomix as well. Then we've got our sous vide mode, which is cooking um, your protein, fish, um, meat, vegetables in a bag um, that has been cryovacked and then um, in a water bath, which in your Thermomix. And that's going to be really good if you do have one of the um, peeler blade covers, you can actually use the whole Thermomix as a sous vide machine as well. And then obviously the peeler, which is what I used for my potatoes today as well. So that's the modes so far. And as you can see, there's spaces there for new modes. So we are getting new modes and things all the time. Um, now, rice isn't cooked in the basket. Evelyn, actually, yes, I reckon the best place to cook your rice is in the basket. We just do have the rice cooker mode um, if people like the absorption method better than the steamed rice in the basket. I say it doesn't hold more, it's just the same amount. Um, I think you probably can do more in the absorption method because you can, you've got a bigger um, area. But my, I think your 350 grams of rice um, in your basket is your way to go if you want nice rice. Personally, that's my personal opinion. 
Um, although I have seen a really nice um, recipe, I think maybe on the recipe community for a um, rice pudding um, and it uses the rice um, absorption method but it's got like milk and sugar and it's more like a dessert rice um, and you have to have you have to do that as the absorption method um, as well um, yeah you can still do it in the basket if you prefer Tracy says you can also sterilize jars in the Varoma you can so anything that you could um, any the Varoma is your steamer so anything that you usually can make with steam um, Yesterday at our cooking class, Julie showed us how to steam a Christmas pudding in the Varoma. Um, you can steam your baby bottles and dummies and all that kind of stuff in the Varoma. Um, you can do dumplings and stuff like that. that and, you know, obviously veggies and chicken like you've seen today. So, yeah. Steamed banana puddings. Oh, they're so good. I haven't had them for so long, Tash. Don't remind me of those things. <laughs> but they are really good. We do have um, little moulds there, these ones. Look at me just skipping off the off the stage. Um, but we've got these little moulds. They're called Dariol moulds. And they go in your Varoma. And you can do little individual, they're um, silicon. You can do little individual um, like self-sourcing puddings and yummy things like that. The banana puddings. Very, very yummy. <laughs> anyway, if there's no more questions or come off mute if you do have a question but that wraps up our um, virtual cooking experience for today thank you so much for being here with us on this lovely Sunday um, and I hope to chat to you guys soon and yeah just come off mute if, as you're leaving if you've got any questions um, I'll stay on for a bit thanks oh, can I just ask very quickly you sure can you, you know, we you're able to cook the rice in it. Can you cook brown rice? Can you cook quinoa? Like it doesn't really matter, I'm assuming. That's right. Yeah. Um, so obviously there's a recipe for everything pretty much. Um, and I know with your brown rice, it's exactly the same method as your white rice. You just cook it for a little bit longer. Um, quinoa, I think, um, I couldn't, correct me if I'm wrong, Tash, do we cook quinoa up in the Varoma is better? I think with the one of the Varoma sheets. I cook, I cook uh, quinoa in my basket. Oh, in your basket. Okay, good. I don't cook there, quinoa. In the in the in cooking do there's a um, mini collection called Thick and Mode or something like that. Yeah. And it's got different grains, including quinoa. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, yep. Using using that rice cooker mode. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Not, Rice yeah, not. I knew what you meant. Yeah, because in the old one, you have to guess the amount of water and the amount of time for your quinoa as well. Ah, so oh, yeah, no, we've got we've got yeah, all that so sorted now. Yeah, so they've made a cookbook with all different types of grains now because they're all different. Yeah. Good question. Anybody else got any other ones for us? Otherwise, you can hop off. <laughs> Recording Thanks, Gemma. Bye. Bye, Christmas. Bye, question. Bye, Christmas. Sorry, I couldn't see you. <laughs> yeah. Can you go to, can you unspotlight me so everyone can see each other?